To ensure continued adaptations to training, variation is essential. A type of training variation that is often overlooked, but is now becoming more commonly used, is the manipulation of the set structure. In general, there are two types of set structures, which are a traditional set and a cluster set. Traditional sets are where repetitions are performed continuously with a pre-planned interset rest interval. For example, two sets of four repetitions in a traditional set would involve performing four reps, one after the other, followed by an interset rest period, for example three minutes, before performing the second set in the same manner, i.e. four repetitions, one after the other. Whereas, cluster sets are an extended set structure where repetitions are performed with inter-repetition or intra-set rest intervals that are placed within the set. For example, if two sets of four repetitions were to be formed with an inter-repetition rest interval of 30 seconds, it means 30 seconds rest is taken after every rep until the inter-rest rest period, for example 3 minutes, before performing the second set in the same manner. Whereas, if the two sets of four repetitions were to be performed using an intra-set rest of 30 seconds, it means two repetitions would be performed before 30 seconds rest, before completing the remaining two reps in the set, after which the inter-set rest period will be complete, for example, three minutes, before performing the second set in the same manner. The article, published in the Strength and Conditioning Journal, titled Practical Application of Traditional and Cluster Set Configurations Within a Resistance Training Programme, by Tuyoshi and colleagues, provides recommendations on how cluster sets can be programmed to align with specific phases within a periodized plan. The different phases include hypertrophy, basic strength, and strength power. This presentation, brought to you by Talking Sports Science, will provide a summary of their recommendations regarding programming cluster sets in relation to the three key training phases. Starting off with hypertrophy. The aim of this phase is to increase muscle size, increase work capacity, and provide a foundation for higher intensity work to be performed in future training phases. To achieve these goals, a hypertrophy training program typically involves low to moderate intensities and higher overall volume compared to other training phases. Traditional sets may be preferred over cluster sets as previously published literature has demonstrated greater muscle activation, metabolic and hormonal responses for traditional sets when compared with cluster sets. However, not all longitudinal studies agree. Cluster sets may have the potential to induce greater muscle hypertrophy as they allow for the use of greater training loads, for example above 80% of one repetition max, which can increase the time under tension and the mechanical strain which are associated with increased hypertrophy. Given the potential benefits of cluster sets, they may be most suited for power and strength athletes, as higher training loads may induce a specific hypertrophy of type 2 fibres that will help improve performance. However, it is important to be aware of the extra time it may take to implement cluster sets. Any addition in training time is dependent on the structure of the set, including the intra-set and inter-repetition rest intervals, along with the number of repetitions performed in each cluster. If cluster sets are to be used, only using them with one or two key exercises is often recommended. When targeting muscle hypertrophy, from a practical standpoint, a moderate to high repetition scheme for example, 8 to 12 repetitions, is recommended. If opting to use cluster sets, the number of repetitions performed in the cluster 
can vary from one to six repetitions. In terms of the length of inter-repetition and intra-set rest in the cluster set, five to 30 seconds is recommended. When this recovery time is implemented, it will facilitate the maintenance of performance, allow for the use of higher training loads, and still provide some degree of fatigue that may provide a stimulus to promote hypertrophy. In terms of the length of inter-set rest, two to three minutes is recommended to allow enough rest between sets. In terms of what a standard cluster set might look like in a hypertrophy phase, we'll now look at three examples. Example one is performing three sets of 10 repetitions at an intensity between 65 to 75% of 1RM with inter-repetition rest intervals of five seconds. In example two, this is performing three sets of 10 repetitions at an intensity between 65 to 75% of one repetition maximum with intra-set rest intervals of 15 seconds after every two reps. And in example three, again, performing three sets of 10 repetitions at an intensity between 65 to 75% of one repetition maximum, however, with intra-set rest intervals of 30 seconds after five repetitions. And moving on to the basic strength phase. The primary goal in this phase is to increase maximal strength and to increase neural drive. To achieve this, a higher training intensity, for example, between 80 to 90% of one repetition maximum is recommended. Traditional sets are likely to provide equal or superior training adaptations to cluster sets when training loads are equated. However, it should be noted that this may not be the case if greater training loads and volumes permitted by the use of cluster sets are incorporated into the resistance training program. Low to moderate repetition schemes, for example, between two to six repetitions are recommended when targeting basic strength. As mentioned previously, cluster sets are unlikely to provide greater maximal strength gains compared to traditional sets. However, cluster sets with one to three repetitions in each cluster can be used for maintaining movement velocity and lifting technique. If opting to use clusters, an inter-repetition and intra-set rest of 20 to 40 seconds is recommended. And for the length of inter-set rest, two to three minutes is recommended. For strength and power athletes or highly trained athletes, greater training variation is necessary to induce muscle and neural adaptations. Therefore, undulating and ascending cluster sets may be used as a method for adding variability to the resistance training program. An example of undulating cluster set during a basic strength phase includes performing three to five sets using five repetitions with a 30 second inter-repetition rest interval while varying the load after each rep. Or using six repetitions with a 40 seconds intra-set rest interval placed between every two repetitions before varying the load. Whereas, example ascending cluster sets during a basic strength phase includes performing again three to five sets using five repetitions with a 30 seconds inter repetition rest interval this time while increasing the load after each rep. Or using six repetitions with a 40 second intra set rest interval placed between every two reps before increasing the load. These advanced set configurations may induce a potentiation effect that can increase movement velocity within and between sets. This potentiation effect is most likely reserved for stronger individuals. And moving on to the third and final phase, the strength and power phase. The primary goal of the strength and power phase is to focus on the continued development of maximal strength 
its translation into rapid force generation capacity, and ultimately improvements in performance. A mixed method training program using both heavy strength exercises, for example above 80% of one repetition maximum, and ballistic exercises using low training loads, for example less than 30% of 1RM, are recommended. Cluster sets can help to reduce fatigue and to maintain movement velocity during resistance training sessions, which can potentially optimise neural adaptations. It is recommended that cluster sets with inter-repetition rest should only be used for the most technical or fatiguing exercises, such as weightlifting movements and all their derivatives, whereas other exercises should be performed with traditional sets. A low repetition scheme of 2-3 to three reps is recommended when designing resistance training programs during the strength power phase. Given that the recommended number of repetitions in a set during the strength power phase is low, i.e. 2-3 to three repetitions, the number of repetitions performed in the cluster would only be one rep. In terms of the length of inter-repetition and intra-set rest in the cluster set, 20 to 40 seconds is recommended, especially when full weightlifting movements are incorporated into the resistance training program. A standard cluster set example during a strength power phase involves performing three to five sets with a total of three repetitions in each set. That includes a inter-repetition rest interval of 30 seconds. Also, ascending cluster sets with progressively increased loads across the sets can be used as a unique set structure to potentially elevate maximal force generating capacity. For example, performing three sets of three repetitions with the average load for each set corresponding to 81, 84 and 87% of one repetition maximum where the three repetitions in the first set may be performed in a cluster format in which the load is increased after the 30 to 40 seconds inter-repetition rest interval, starting with, for example, 78% of 1RM, moving to 81% 1RM, and finishing with 84% of 1RM. The next three repetitions in the second set may also be performed in the same manner, but involves slightly higher loads, for example 81, 84 and 87% of one repetition maximum, followed by the last three repetitions in the final set, which again involves slightly higher loads, for example 84, 87 and 90% of one repetition maximum. And that folks concludes the recommendations for prescribing cluster sets. It is important to note cluster sets are not to replace traditional sets, but can be incorporated into the different training phases alongside traditional sets in order to optimise muscle hypertrophy as well as an athlete's maximal and rapid force generating capacity, with the ultimate aim of improving athletic performance. Lastly, altering set configurations with the use of cluster sets should be dependent on the aim of the training session, the loads used, the exercise selected and the athlete's level of development. I recommend you check out the full article, the link is in this description. Thanks for listening folks, see you next time.